Hello viewers, I am Dr. Anima Upadhyay and I am back with the electrochemistry part 2 lecture. In my previous lecture on the electrochemistry, we have already discussed the cells, electrolytic and electrochemical cell and we have learned about the components of the electrochemical cells. So when we immerse the electrode in the solution of its ions, it develops a potential at the interface. And this electrode potential therefore can be explained as the tendency of an electrode to lose or gain the electrons. If the electrode lo lose, loss, uh, loses the electrons, it is called oxidation potential. And if it gains the electrons, it is termed as the reduction potential and it is denoted as written here. If we immerse the electrode in the solution under standard conditions, then the potential developed is called the standard electrode potential. That is, when the electrode is immersed in a solution of one molar concentration of its ions, and maintained at 298 kelvins, then the potential which develops is called the standard electrode potential. In case of a gas electrode, it is also the pressure at which the gas is bubbled, maintained at one atmosphere, and it is denoted by E0. Let us understand what are the factors that affects the electrode potential. So it is the material of the electrode, the concentration of metal ions and the temperature. Material plays an important role in determining the electrode potential. Because a metal which has a high reduction potential undergoes reduction and can be used as cathodic material. And the one with the lower reduction potential can be used as anodic material. So, when we immerse the electrode in the solution, either it may undergo oxidation or reduction. And this gives rise to the origin of electrode potential. The reaction which takes place is represented here with the help of this reaction. The metal either dissolves to produce electrons or it may accept the electrons. The metal ions accepts the electrons and get reduced at the cathode as metal. And this process continues till a dynamic equilibrium is attained. So here if you, we see the arrows. The arrow, the lower arrow, which is representing oxidation and the upper arrow is representing the reduction and both are going simultaneously. This is, this shows the dynamic equilibrium. So there are two theories which are put forward for the origin of electrode potential. One is the Helmholtz double layer theory, HDL and second is the Stern's adsorption theory. According to the HDL theory, the Helmholtz W theory, suppose the electrode undergoes oxidation, that is the loss of electrons. Then the electrons accumulate on the surface of the electrode, which in turn attracts the positive ions, that is the metal ions around the electrode. And the metal ions are held by the electrons with the help of electrostatic force of attraction which gives rise to a double layer at the interface and this is called the Helmholtz double layer HDL. The thickness of this layer is approximately the radius of the ion. The origin of single electrode potential is largely due to the formation of HDL. Beyond the HDL the ions are diffusely spread in the solution, forming the 
GCL Boye Chapman layer. The HDL theory and the Stearns theory are denoted with the help of these figures. Here the electrode which is undergoing oxidation releases the electrons which are held here and these electrons attracts the positive ions forming the HDL. The radius of the ion is represented here in this figure and it is shown that the electrodes which helps the double layer here and according to Stern's adsorption theory the adsorption also takes place along with the formation of double layer and Beyond this HDL, the ions are spread diffusely in the solution. So, the Stern's theory is based on adsorption as well as the electrostatic attraction of the metal ions at the interface. Once we have understood the electrode potential, the single electrode potential, then we should also learn how to write the representation of a galvanic cell because we know that the galvanic cell is made up of two half cells. I have already explained the working and the construction of the galvanic cell in my lectures on electrochemical corrosion. So, there are few conventions with the help of those conventions we can write the galvanic cell structure very easily. Let us understand how to write the structure. So first thing which comes is the sign of the electrode potential. As we all know that the standard electrode potential is taken as the reduction potential and therefore at cathode because the reduction takes place there therefore it's sign is taken as positive whereas at anode oxidation takes place therefore its sign is taken as negative so to write the cathode we should always write metal ions first followed by the metal because it is the metal ions which accepts the electrons from the outer circuit and gets reduced at the electrode for writing the anode, we should always write metal first followed by metal ions because it is the metal which gets oxidized and loses the electrons. And this is how what I have explained here that the anode is represented by writing the metal first followed by the metal ions with the help of zinc. The zinc is written first followed by zinc ions. Similarly, for writing cathode, the copper ions are written first followed by the copper. And the line, vertical line, which is in between the two here and here also is the interface. How to write the electrolyte? So, for writing the electrolyte, we can either write the ionic species or the formula of the compound. So suppose we have taken copper electrode immersed in copper sulfate and zinc in the zinc sulfate. So either we can write Cu2 plus or we can write CuSO4. Similarly, we can either write Zn2 plus or ZnSO4. The concentration of the electrolyte also should be mentioned and to write the concentration of the electrolyte, small brackets are used in which the concentration is written in terms of molarity. So, copper sulfate example is taken here. Again, copper sulfate I have written either with the help of formula or with the help of ionic species and we have written the concentration within the brackets. Now as we know that the two half cells are connected to each other with the help of a salt bridge. So we should always mention the salt bridge which is mentioned with the help of two vertical lines. So for writing the Daniel cell structure, first the anodic 
half cell is written then the cathodic half cell is written and the two half cells are connected with the help of solvent so this two vertical lines indicates the presence of salt bridge if in a galvanic cell an inert electrode like platinum is used the inert electrode in that case is written within the brackets on either side of the half cells so in case of a gas gas electrode that is hydrogen electrode the platinum which is used for electrical contact is written within the brackets so if we are using the hydrogen electrode as anode it is written on the left hand side if it is acting as cathode the platinum electrode will be written on the right hand side the electrode reactions that is the redox reactions that take place in the two half cells are represented here and because we have taken the daniel cell example to represent the to represent the electrode reactions in the anodic half cell zinc is getting oxidized liberating the electrons and in the cathodic half cell the copper ions are accepting the electrons and getting reduced to copper so the net cell reaction is sum of both the half cell reactions that is anodic half cell and cathodic half cell and is represented here as zinc when it reacts with the copper ions gives zinc ions and copper and the emf of the cell is 1.1 volts so in short we can represent the galvanic cell taking the example of daniel cell we can write it zinc and zinc ions then the salt bridge followed by copper ions and copper and the emf of the cell that is e is written on the right hand side that is 1.1 volts how we have calculated the emf of the cell it's very easy because it is the algebraic difference between the reduction potentials of cathode and anode so we can write it as e cell is equal to e not right minus e not left because we know that e not right is the e cathode and e not left is the e anode so we can write it as e not cell is equal to e cathode minus e anode and a cell to be spontaneous the e cell should be positive only then the cell will be feasible working and so we can say that e not cathode should be greater than e not anode here i have taken the example of daniel cell and calculated the e cell to give the demonstration at anode in the daniel cell the zinc gets oxidized with the liberation of two electrons and the e not is minus 0.76 volts at the cathode the copper ions in the solution accepts these electrons that comes from the external circuit and gets reduced to copper and the e not is plus 0.34 volts so substituting these two in the formula we get e not cell is equal to 0.34 minus within the bracket minus 0.76 that is the e not of the anode we get 1.1 volts so this is how the emf of a cell can be calculated in my upcoming lectures i'll discuss more about the electrochemistry so keep watching my lectures thank you very much